I did promise a second video about the Heiko FX 950 soldering station and the second video was to focus on the soldering pencil. The soldering pencil is excellent. Um, it has a uh, fairly small di overall diameter cable. It's tangled up in amongst a bunch of jug cords back here. DVI cabling. Um, nice thin cable compare my knockoff T12 cable. That's quite a difference when you're trying to get into position. It has um, this fellow in it which is my um, leaded solder copper wire thing. I really like these. I've, I've got a packet of fresh ones ready to go. This goes in easily. I think this is a scraper of some sort. I really don't know. Um, and back in here there is the supplied silicone pad that can be fitted to the cord um, to hold the tips during um, when they're hot for a tip change. It's not something that I expect to be doing a lot of. So I've just kind of hidden it back here where it'll probably get um, get a hot solder dripped on it occasionally. This little fellow is designed to go on the key for the um, temperature dial. So to remove the tip and it took me a little moment actually to figure this out properly. You squeeze these little tabs here that release the front and then it pulls the tip out. So then you can, if it's hot, you can then grab the tip with that silicone mat and um, pull it out the front. Now, you can hear that click, that was quite a firm click. <coughs> Pardon me, and when I first set this up, I didn't realize quite how firm I had to be. It doesn't click quite so loudly going in, you've really got a feel for it. But it's very much secure in there, and if it's not, it, it doesn't match up. Look how, how fine that is. Nice and gentle, we don't want to bend any contacts in there, and then we wear in. And that, that's how we go. With this other iron, it's sort of counterintuitive to hold the iron forward of about this point here. But as you can see, if you take that same kind of bump location, grip location, you're much closer to the element. And I've actually found you can feel the heat. Um feel the heat and so it actually you really want to bring your fingers back a little bit but control is excellent so that's the soldering pencil it's a lovely thing um with a genuine tip it is um like a ream steady hot and strong and it goes there i'm not actually going to do any soldering in this video this when it gets hot will melt an alloy of lead and tin or tin and traces of copper and silver the next thing to talk about is this fellow. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I think it was kind of cheap of Hacko to supply a stand for the iron that doesn't have any temperature switching. Now, I think this one's actually got like a, a little reed switch in it that looks for, or a little mercury switch maybe that looks for um, movement. And it doesn't matter if it's in the stand or elsewhere. If it's not been moved for a long time, it goes into low power mode. This has no such feature, and the um, stand that comes with the 951 has a 3.5 millimeter stereo headphone jack on the back on a little micro switch, and this whole assembly here, including this back plate, are on a pivot. When the iron goes in and drops down, actuates a switch and tells the, the uh, base station to drop the temperature to 200 Celsius for, to preserve the tip. And with the rate these heat up, I reckon, you know, by the time you've pulled it out and got in a position, you, you're well and truly there. However, this does have, focus, maybe not, yep, the socket. And I had a bit of a look around 
<coughs> I had a bit of a look around and found a stand for, oh look I've spilt little solder fragments everywhere, probably lead based, that's going to be a bit of a clean up. I had a look around online and did find a um, 951 base and I've bought one um, and I'm actually kind of happy about it because even though like I said it would heat up really fast, if I'm really in the thick of it, maybe I've got a, a bigger tip in here, I can drop it into a stand that doesn't turn it off and get it back out at full temperature. I'll, I'll actually keep both of them side by side on my bench um, and that'll be really really good. So there's a bit of a look at the soldering pencil. Um, the same review probably applies to the 951, although I don't have one. Um, it's light, it's slender. There's a relatively short distance from the grip to the business end of the iron. Um, it, it's just a lovely, lovely thing. There we go. It tends to pick up most of the bits. I vacuum it in here fairly regularly as well, even though it is a, a, an outdoor shed type thing. So, lovely, lovely stuff. I'm very happy with it. Glad I bought the uh, 950. Even with the stand, it's still a lot cheaper than a 951. And I can, as I've said, just adjust the temperature like that. I mean, that's <laughs> what you want. Not what you want with the production line and, you know, maybe someone who's in a hurry to do their work for the day goes too hot and damages stuff or whatever um, but for as I've said before for a, a DIYer who is working with boards that have different thermal mass between pads because of poor thermal relief practices and stuff um, never mind different size wires as you transition from you know diodes to ceramic capacitors or whatever being able to adjust the temperature on the fly quickly and accurately and with a minimum amount of clicking around and so on is fantastic. Um, the Pirate sort of T12 type thing, if that's what they are, the, the, the off-brand ones, they're fantastic as well. They just have a knob, as you'd hope. Um, it's almost a case of the uh, 951 being too much iron for, for a hobbyist in a whole bunch of ways.